Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and in this session on climatology, we are going to discuss about the first basic component of the climatology that is the atmosphere, its structure and its composition. But before we go ahead, do like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now, let's learn about this important part of the entire climatology that we study that is the atmosphere. So this atmosphere has a particular structure and a composition. If we look into this image, what you see? It is stratified. It is in the layers and various layers have various names. For example, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere. And there are several other components that we see and several activities that we can observe, right? Right from flying a jet plane to launching a satellite to having rainfall to actually traveling across the space. So that is important where this atmosphere comes to the picture and remember this atmosphere is something which is very unique to our planet earth and that is where the entire heat balance and life balance is maintained on earth because of this particular sphere. So atmosphere is one of the key components that we have already studied in the nature part or in the introduction to climatology in the previous session. So let's discuss about this structure of atmosphere and the composition of atmosphere for the basic understanding of further phenomena that we discuss in lectures to come. So let's elaborate this further. So beginning from the first word itself, the atmos. So the Greek origin of this atmos basically means vapor. It basically means a gaseous state. And sapphira is basically what? A ball or a globe. So what we see is this is an envelope in which there is this entire global coverage through what? Through this gaseous state of matter, that is the vapor state of matter. So this is the basic definition of atmosphere, that it is a entire global ball or sphere that covers the entire or it envelops the entire earth, which has the major component, which is the gases or the vapor. So that is the basic idea of atmosphere. Now let's elaborate further more. Now air, which is essential to the survival of all organisms. So this life on earth is important attribute related to the atmosphere that we say. Then atmosphere is what? It is a mixture of different gases. Now remember, in school, in sciences, you must have studied this chapter elements, compounds and mixture. So remember, atmosphere is not an element. It is not a compound. Rather, it is a mixture of different gases and it envelops the earth all around. So it contains life-giving gases like oxygen for human beings that is most important and for animals and carbon dioxide for plants. So we see this O2CO2 balance being maintained right then air is an integral part of the earth's mass as well so 99% of the total mass of the atmosphere is confined to the height of about 32 kilometers only so from ground to 32 kilometers if we go the most of this atmosphere is confined that is 99% of the atmosphere's mass is confined to the height of 32 kilometers above earth's surface that is a point to Remember, so that is where the altitude is important and altitudinal structure of the atmosphere that we study is also important. So when we say altitudinal structure, let's understand the structure of the atmosphere and what we have here is there are five major layers in the structure of the atmosphere depending upon what criteria? Temperature variation criteria, right? So remember this stratification is done on the temperature gradient or the temperature criteria that we say. So it is troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, then we have thermosphere and then exosphere, right? So what you observe here is this temperature on one axis on the base and altitude. So what we see with altitude, what happens to the temperature? So look at this particular place, which is troposphere. So what happens? The temperature actually goes from positive to negative, right? Till this particular transition zone that is tropopause. So the word itself is pause. Here there is a mixing zone where there is a pause happening. So what happens from this pause again? Again, these temperatures starts to rise in this stratosphere, right? So for some time it remains constant and then again starts rising when we go ahead in what? In altitude, in stratosphere, right? So that is important. Then what we observe again is, again it remains constant for some time, which is stratopause. And then again it starts decreasing in mesosphere, right? It goes to the minus segment. And this is the plus segment, this is the minus segment, remember. Then in mesosphere, what happens? 
the mesopause is the transition zone between meso and thermo so again here sometimes it remains constant and then again it goes on increasing and further when we go to the exosphere we find the differences so what we see is a sigma kind of situation in the diagram if we see right so when we say summation remember so this is a simple diagram if you can remember this looks like this pattern right from the troposphere to the exosphere the outer sphere how does this isotherm look like this line which we say so this looks like a sigma so what happens here there is a change in temperature across all these layers with altitudinal factor that is where the structurization of atmosphere is important on the basis of this temperature so that is where we say five layer structure or the stratified structure of the atmosphere is important so now let's go one by one and understand the property of each of them so first of all the lowest and the closest to us on the ground that is the troposphere so let's understand what is this about it is the lowest layer of earth's atmosphere and troposphere starts at surface of the earth and goes up to height of 7 to 20 kilometers now this is a variation here now we'll also talk about why this varies but for now just understand there is a variation there is a range from 7 to 20 kilometers that is a variation on the entire earth the air never remains static in this layer it means in this layer there is lots of changes happening that's why it is also called changing sphere all right so troposphere is a dynamic sphere where lots of changes are happening so this is a layer where lots of atmospheric phenomena keeps happening all weather conditions that we see changes that we see occurs in this particular layer and this layer has water vapor and mature particles that we should understand and apart from that what we observe here is what is happening the temperature decreases as you see this graph right so temperature decreases at the rate of 1 degree celsius for every 165 meters and many people also write it into 6.5 degrees c per thousand meters that is for one kilometers so it is an average value so you can take either of them that's okay so that is also known as lapse rate so in a separate lecture we are going to talk about lapse rate in the lectures to come so for now remember there is a temperature decrease with the increase in altitude in troposphere and this is also called the normal lapse rate or environmental lapse rate elr so tropopause is the end point which we see this is a transition zone between troposphere and the next layer that is the stratosphere now the question was the thickness of troposphere why it varies now remember its thickness is maximum where at equator and deeper in the tropics up to 20 kilometers now remember at equator it is maximum and further up to 20 kilometers in tropics and where it is the least it is shallower at the polar regions now this is a statement to remember on which many questions can be asked what is the height of troposphere in india it is about 16 kilometers so somewhere between 7 and 20 now why this is there why this change of thickness happens all across the earth why is it not similar everywhere so the thickness of troposphere and consequently the atmosphere is maximum at equator due to reasons discussed below so these are the reasons that you can remember for now so high insulation and strong convection currents occur over the equator so that is one important aspect right maximum insulation and remember the concept hot air rises up so the height will be maximum there right because maximum air convection currents will be going from ground to the air then air is less dense at equator obviously when air is heated up what happens their molecules separate remember the intermolecular spaces the difference between the molecules is actually growing because of the heating effect that is where the density of the air becomes lesser that is important but exactly opposite what happens at the pole remember it is a cold condition it is that's why the molecules come shrinking right so that is where it is important so poles exert more gravitational pull as well on atmospheric gases now this is important related to the gravity pull so gravity pull effect is maximum at the poles and apart from that the centrifugal force due to earth's rotation remember the coriolis force the centrifugal force 
so that is important and it is maximum where at the equator so that is another factor that actually leads to this kind of variation then chemical composition of troposphere basically what the water vapor content and its variation changes across the atmosphere at various points so on ocean surfaces near equator it is different than poles so that is where this change is also important and apart from that the change of troposphere that is where environmental lapse rate is important right so these are the major factors that actually determine the thickness of troposphere which you should remember and remember the basic concept that is the insulation that is the heating effect that is the basic idea and apart from this heating effect there are several other factors that we learned and that's where density changes forces on earth due to its rotation and gravity are also important right so other factors are there but the most important factor is the heat factor so that's where this variation we see that troposphere's thickness varies across right from equator to the poles that we need to remember now let's go to this next one after this tropopause what do you see here is the stratosphere the next layer right so what happens here we have already seen that now here unlike this troposphere the temperature again starts to increase right after being constant for the first portion the temperature starts to increase here so that is important here so in second layer of atmosphere found above the troposphere it varies up to 50 km of height right so that is important again that altitude is increasing here then this layer is very dry as it contains very little water vapor now here is a catch that water vapor content is less this layer provides some advantages for flight now here when you board a flight where do you fly you fly in this layer that is stratosphere Right? Why there is an advantage to fly in this layer? Because the stormy weather is not there. Remember, the stormy weather actually ends at this tropopause only. So above this tropopause, there is this layer where there is an advantage of flying for the flights. So it has a steady, strong horizontal wind blowing. Right? That's where it is important. Then ozone layer the most important layer in today's context when we say climate change and uv protection remember it is found in this particular layer in the lower portion of this layer so that is where it is important it safeguards us from the harmful radiation right so the lower stratosphere has this ozonosphere many times you will find this word also written at various sources when you read it is called ozonosphere and ozonosphere is where in the lower stratosphere and what is the altitude of this ozonosphere it varies from 15 to 35 kilometers now remember this particular zone right from tropopause to the upper stratosphere this is the variation so we say it is majorly the lower portion of stratosphere where this ozone concentration is there and the next portion that we see here is the, again the zone where you have the end of the stratosphere and beginning of the next layer this is called stratopause important is that this pause is where the, there is a constancy here if you can see there is this constancy in the temperature there is not much rise not much fall so that is where it is a pause and it is between strato and meso that's why it is called strato pause that is important here then we have the next layer we see here is mesosphere again in mesosphere what we see again there is a decrease here so mesosphere is found above the stratosphere it is coldest now here is the catch it goes to the maximum extreme right it is the coldest layer of the entire atmosphere and its variation is from 50 kilometers to 85 kilometers so by 80 kilometer it reaches up to about 100 degree c minus temperature so remember about 80 kilometers it becomes now minus somewhere here right so that is important and meteors burn up in this layer remember the meteors fall and burn maximum in this layer itself the upper limit is called mesopause remember again like stratopause and tropopause here another layer is coming that is thermosphere so this particular zone of constancy is called mesopause which separates mesosphere and thermosphere now the next layer is known as the thermosphere again what we see in the graph there is again a rise in temperature so this layer is found above mesopause from 80 to 400 kilometers now this is the range that we see here right so what is the significance of thermosphere the word itself is therm it means heat 
right? So radio waves which are transmitted from the earth are reflected back by this layer. Now remember the thermosphere has another further bifurcation where we say this is called ionosphere. Ions are there, the charged particles are there, plus and minus. Remember, these charged particles are the important factors which are called ionosphere in the lower thermosphere which actually leads to this radio wave transmission. It helps us where this charged particles, the ionosphere reflects back and it leads to radio wave communication. It helps us in that. So the temperature increases here with height again what we see, right? And aurora and satellites occur in this layer. Now remember there is a phenomena called aurora borealis or aurora australis which we are going to study further. So this is where these charged particles or ionization happens and that is where the flash of radiations in different kinds of color streams which people actually go and travel to Scandinavian countries to polar regions to actually observe this interesting light phenomena which we know as Aurora Borealis and also the satellites for communication have been placed in this layer that we see right so that is important here in thermosphere and finally what we observe is that part which we are discussing that is the ionosphere part of this thermosphere. This lower thermosphere which we say is ionosphere is important here and it has electrically charged particles ionized by cosmic and solar radiations and further this portion after 400 actually meets with the outer space that is part of the exosphere right. So exosphere is the last layer of our stratification of the atmosphere which connects to the outer space right. So let's learn about it. Exosphere is the 400 to the outer space that is up to almost 10,000 kilometers it extends and remember it has that particular zone which has the molecules and atoms that escape into space. So this is something where it is important that from here the molecules and atoms also tend to escape from this right. So that is where this importance of exosphere is that it connects us to the outer space and it is the last layer in terms of this altitudinal zonation if we see. That is where the exosphere is from 400 to almost 10,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So that is important as a structure part. So what we have learned in this structure is right from the troposphere to the tropopause, then stratosphere, stratopause, mesosphere, mesopause, thermosphere and then exosphere. And in which we have learned about the ino and the ozonosphere. These are the two important points here that we need to remember. So ozone is part of the stratosphere, ionosphere is part of the thermosphere, right? So this is the entire stratification of the atmosphere structure. Now let's look at the composition part. So when we go by composition, this is a very standard composition that you can find in NCRT books. So there are certain gases which are of permanent nature. It means their nature doesn't change much. So Look at the list, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, neon, helium, krypton, xenon, hydrogen. So largely their percentage is almost fixed, right? So these permanent gases form a constant proportion of the atmosphere that is important. But here is a catch. In carbon dioxide, now here due to the anthropogenic climate change what we study, here we are actually changing, we are messing up with this permanent gas here. So that is also important that this part which is carbon dioxide which is about 0.036, here is something where the changes are actually happening. So remember, apart from all this permanent nature of the gases, human beings are actually trying to alter it through their activities. That is where the atmospheric composition is being altered, that's where the impact of climate change due to anthropogenic activities we are trying to map. So that's important here. But largely the atmosphere is composed of these gases apart from that water vapor and all these aerosol or dust particles. So apart from permanent gases what we have here is the variable gases. Now here the variable gases are water vapor, ozone and also this carbon dioxide. So now we also consider carbon dioxide as one of the variables because there is certain kind of change that we are actually looking into this carbon dioxide. So remember earlier carbon dioxide was part of the permanent gases but now it has also been part of the variable gases because of the anthropogenic factors that we talk about. Now these greenhouse gases that we keep hearing, what are these? So remember this carbon dioxide, it is one of the most important greenhouse gases with the residence time of about 150 year. Now its main sources are plant and animal respiration, volcanic activity, organic decay, combustion of fossil fuels that we see, right? And where is it sinking? Where is it actually now finally going down? It is that where photosynthesis is important. 
So this is consumed in this. So the carbon sinks are either photosynthesis or are great oceans, right? So that is where the health of the planet is dependent upon the greenery and the ocean health that we say only because of this particular factor that they are carbon sinks. So if the atmosphere had no greenhouse gases, just remember this. If atmosphere had no greenhouse gases, what would have happened? Our temperatures would not have been maintained. It would have fallen to about this particular 90 degree F, that is 32 degree C cooler. So that would have gone down by this. So that is where the temperature regulation on Earth's surface is done through these greenhouse gases. That's why it is important. Also, what we talk is the seasonal oscillation in concentration of these gases. And we see this graphically from 1960 to the early 21st century so what you observe is this seasonal fluctuation happening right so what you observe is that this data from Mauna Loa observatory from Hawaii and there is this long-term increase in concentration due to this anthropogenic combustion so remember the graph is steadily increasing and that is where we are worried about the climate change apart from this Ozone as we see that is one part of the variable gases. It is one of the most important gases because it has beneficial factors as well and harmful factors as well. So it means it is beneficial for human being and harmful for human being that is the basic crux of the matter. So ozone which is also called O3. So three oxygen atoms make this particular gas. So O3 concentrations in the stratosphere as we know that is about 10 to 30 miles above sea level are relatively high. So maximum concentration is the lower stratosphere as we know and the major beneficial function is what? It is UV radiation which is absorbed by this ozone but it is also an irritant. If it is hanging close to our earth surface, what happens? It leads to lots of pollution that we see, right? And it is also irritant for human beings, right? It causes lots of irritation in the eyes and other diseases related to lungs. So that is important to understand that it has both beneficial and harmful factors involved in it. Now let's look at the formation that is the creation and destruction through this particular equation. So when we say natural ozone cycle, what happens? O2, which is oxygen, and it reacts with the UV, that is ultraviolet radiation, it breaks into this OO, that is separate O and separate O. Now this one separate O actually attaches itself to the oxygen and it becomes O3. That's where this UV is important here, right? So O3 plus UV again gives you 1O and 1O2. This is a simple chemical equation. So what you observe is the role of this UV here, right? And then... If CFCs are there, if chlorofluorocarbons are there, then we see these ozone holes happening, right? Why? Because now remember, CFC reacts with this UV, ultraviolet, and it forms different byproducts, that is chlorofluorocarbon and independent charged particles, that is ions we see is the chlorine and others. So what we see is this Cl plus O3. Now we see different kinds of molecular formations. So what happens? This ozone is actually broken by this particular CFC. So chlorofluorocarbons breaks this ozone, what we see in this particular equation. So what happens when the ozone is broken? It means ozone's concentration is now being destructed. So construction and destruction, both important factors are there. So if ozone is being destroyed, what will happen? This UV factor, which used to be neutralized here, can you see here? So this UV factor, which was earlier neutralized by ozone, is now actually coming to the ground. And that is where ultraviolet radiation is harmful for human beings and animal life as well on Earth's surface. So remember, that's the whole idea of ozone depletion and ozone sustenance that we talk about in climate change. Then another significant gas that is important in terms of greenhouse gas is methane. So it is called CH4. It is a variable gas with residence time of about 10 years. And remember, it finds major sources in rice cultivation, wetlands, mining areas, biomass burning, fossil fuel extraction, animal digestion, and the only thing that we see is the atmospheric chemical reactions. So remember, don't undermine the methane. It is also one of the important aspects on which many times in climatic conferences and world summits, people have said that because rice producing areas of the world are in developing nations and that's where the geopolitics starts to happen on climate. That if you're producing rice 
in developing nations it means you are equally contributing rather than only the west which is contributing in terms of industrial pollutions so this is a debate that rises of on the basis of this methane factor only that is important to understand and then finally we see this water vapor so it decreases with altitude that is the first important point then it is warm and wet tropics where it is 4% of the air and dry and cold areas it is just 1% so obviously water vapor is maximum in warm and wet tropics that we know and it is decreasing from where from equator towards the poles so if we go from equator to the poles what happens water vapor content is actually getting lesser and lesser and it is the factor that leads to the maximum stability and instability which we are going to talk in lectures to come so remember when we talk about atmospheric stability and instability water vapor has a major role to play in that that's important here and finally let's look at these aerosols so what are these aerosols the particles the solid particles that we talk about so when we say pm2 or spm2 remember in terms of when we say that there is a problem in the concentration of air right pollution so this is particulate matter or suspended particulate matter so these are what these are part of the aerosols these are solid particles that are hanging like dust smoke sea spray volcanic ash these are important so typical concentration is the 17000 per inch cube here right and typical diameter is 10 microns and typical lifespan is days to weeks so remember it is not for months or years but it keeps hanging around in the air for months if you understand about urban pollution these days in different metro cities in india and abroad as well this has become a menace right so aerosols become important and remember mostly they are coming from natural sources but anthropogenic sources like vehicular pollution has become one of the most important factors in aerosol concentration so primary sinks include the dry and wet depositions that is important and acts as a cloud condensation nuclei remember the cloud formation won't happen if these particulates are not there because these are the nuclei on which these droplets settle and form the clouds so remember it has a benefit as well that aerosols are also important but only in a fixed concentration in natural ways when we as human beings start adding to it through our construction activities through the vehicular pollution then it starts to become a problem for example if you look at this Lubbock dust storm the very famous in north West Texas, you see this aerosol concentration, high concentration here. If in an image you can see that there is a high concentration of aerosols. So these are the important compositions of the atmosphere that becomes important right from the constant gases and to the variable ones where greenhouse gases are important. These water vapor and aerosols are also important. So this is the entire structure and composition of atmosphere. So now when we have discussed about the basics of atmosphere, its structures, various layers, its properties and its various composition, in the lectures to come, we are going to learn more on the aspects of insulation, temperature and so on. So stay tuned, stay safe and all the best wishes.